Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hopefully you're having an amazing day. I want to start this video out discussing a major change in AMD strategy going forward as the company are adopting a hybrid approach for their future CPU designs. Or if you prefer heterogeneous big dot little or to use uh, Intel's older lake speak, high performance cores and energy efficient cores. And we'll be discussing this in depth in just a moment after a message from this video's sponsor. If you're running a copy of Windows 10, which isn't activated, of course, not only do you have to worry about the missing customization options, but there's also that annoying Windows desktop watermark reminding you to activate. Today's video is sponsored by whokeys.com, and they have an excellent price on Windows 10 Professional, as well as home keys. Yeah, and they also, of course, sell games. I've bought a few Windows 10 keys with my own personal account to test everything was legit and worked in preparation for this sponsored video. You can pick up one of their keys for 25% off using the coupon code RGT in the checkout. There's links to their website in the video description. Also, if you're building a few systems, there's bundles available too. Again, you can check out whokeys.com and use the coupon code RGT for 25% off the listed Windows 10 key prices. So yeah, with Intel's older lake, as well as future processors from the company such as Raptor Lake, they are using two different types of CPU cores, energy efficient cores and high performance cores. Naturally, the high performance cores go bruh if you're playing a game or doing some other task which is highly, well, demanding. And then the energy efficient cores basically do their thing and the uh, high performance cores are just, they dormant. If you're, say, writing a Word document or do something that's not particularly demanding. And this is really great across scaling for different uh, power envelopes, for example, high performance desktop, or if you're, say, designing a laptop, which is supposed to be ultra thin and light and so on. And you can do different core configurations depending on your task. Now, one thing AMD have been doing for quite a few years now, of course, is experimenting with throwing different pieces of silicon together on well, <laughs> just a package. And we've seen this, of course, with great effect, starting with something like Zen 2. In fact, they even did, you know, kind of experiments before that. But yeah, really with the Zen line of processors, we've really seen what AMD can do with packaging technology. And naturally the company early next year are going to be releasing a Zen uh, Vcash, which is basically, or Ryzen Vcash actually, which is basically Zen 3, but then with a crap ton of cash bolted on top of it, essentially. And it's having massive impacts, of course, of performance. AMD have already disclosed we're looking at at least a 15% IPC gain over uh, a standard Zen 3 architecture, which, when you think about it, is absolutely tremendous. Like, that is definitely a generational uplift. And then Zen 4 comes out, but, yeah, we have been hearing some rumors that uh, AMD will be doing heterogeneous type of architectures for some time now and i personally have mentioned a couple of times in the video but there's a very interesting thing that had been discovered by foreignx.com now i won't be going too much into the technical details in this video in fact i'm going to pretty much glaze over all of them uh they do go over some of it in the article so i'll link it in the video description but yeah it's pretty technical and honestly it's kind of outside of the scope of this news video uh, i might i'm probably going to be covering it much more in depth in another video that i'm going to be putting out I don't know, next couple of days or so. However, the gist here is that it does essentially say that AMD are laying the building blocks for two different types of processors or more on the same die. Now, this is almost certainly to my understanding for the Zen 5 microprocessor architecture. So basically we have Zen 4, which of course follows the Ryzen V caches. And then I'm hearing there's probably gonna be a Ryzen V cache uh, for Zen 4 as well. And then obviously after that, there's going to be Zen 5. Now the small cores to my understanding from one of my sources is gonna be essentially a derivative of Zen 4. I'm not so sure yet what they're making, uh, sorry, what changes they're making in terms of the architecture. But yeah, to my understanding, the small cores are gonna be Zen uh, 4 and the big cores, the high performance cores are going to be Zen 5. I'm gonna be putting a video out really discussing uh, some of AMD's strategies uh, for processors and how they're going to stack up with Intel in the video I just mentioned a moment ago. Um, so this is one of the reasons that I'm going to be getting more technical in that. But yeah, it's a really interesting approach for AMD, I feel. And it makes sense in the grander scheme of things with the industry because quite honestly, 
Intel and AMD are not just in competition with one another, which of course they are for dominance in the x86 space. In fact, there's been, you know, um, a sales data which has come out which shows that Intel are doing better now with Older Lake. They've actually had the highest share of like CPU sales in quite a while, thanks to Older Lake, but AMD are still on top, which is, you know, not too surprising really for numerous reasons. However, they also are facing growing pressure from numerous other players in the industry. ARM is obviously one of those, and you can also say, of course, Apple. Now, I'm sure some people will say, well, they are, you know, kind of targeting different markets and so on and so on. This is definitely true, but at the end of the day, you know, energy efficiency is something that all of these companies do need to work towards. And one of the things that Zen 5 is aiming at is actually energy efficiency. It's going to be very interesting, I feel, over the next couple of years to see the building blocks of what Intel and AMD are going to be laying. I suspect that the industry going forward is going to change considerably when we start talking about all the accelerator uh, architectures that we're going to be seeing are bolted onto these CPUs. And furthermore, of course, GPUs themselves are kind of a weird one because we've seen a lot of uh, efficiency improvements with something like DLSS or XESS or FSR or whatever. At the end of the day, those are to improve efficiency or I suppose performance, but power consumption is... <laughs> oh boy, it's power consumption, all right, isn't it? It's like, damn. Um, you know, we're hearing rumors that we're going to be seeing 400 plus watts, depending on the architecture for the next generation. So it's like, I suppose you can say that, uh, you know, let's just put it this way. There's a reason I put a joke on Twitter in the last day or so when I was mentioning that, you know, previous generation cars, you, you could SLI them for high performance graphics. With the next generation cars, you're going to need to SLI your power supplies to power the GPU. Um, but anyway, speaking of GPUs, there are a couple of very interesting stories that are floating around. And this uh, first one is actually for videocards.com. I believe it's an exclusive, and it pertains to the release date of the RTX 3090 Ti and a couple of other SKUs. Now, I have to say that... The release dates for these cards have been really juggled around for some time now, and uh, the last time I spoke to one of my sources, I was told that things are still in flux. However, apparently the new information from videocards.com is that we now have a release date. I will, of course, link that article in the description of this very video. But we're going to be seeing a few products release. The first is the RTX 3090 Ti, and the on-shelf date is apparently going to be January 27. So, yeah, I mean, that's not too, too, too much longer to wait. And we've also learned that there will be an announcement on December 17th, which, again, isn't too long, which is an RTX 3070 Ti, and this is going to be a 16 gigabyte card. And this card will be released early next year. It's going to be the 11th, if you want the precise release date. Now, I won't go over the specifications too much because we've talked about them about a billion times at this point. But basically, if we compare the RTX 3090 to the RTX 3090 Ti, there are a couple of major improvements. The first is that memory speeds see a massive increase in clock frequency from 19.5 Gbps up to 21. And there is also additional CUDA cores as well. So from 10,496 all the way up to 10,752. I've personally heard that clock frequencies might also increase, which is possibly another reason we're seeing so much higher in, ter in terms of TDP, excuse me, but I don't know about that personally, so I'm just going to shrug myself. As, uh, um, as for the 3070Ti, no information on clock frequencies, but of course the major difference is that it doubles the amount of memory from the 3070Ti vanilla. So the 3070Ti 16GB basically doubles memory, but we don't know about the... Uh, Clock frequency of the core, however, the clock frequency of the memory is basically identical to what we already have. Furthermore, there's rumors that we're going to see the RTX 3050 launch on the 27th of January. Also, just so you know, according to some statements from NVIDIA, the RTX 2060 12 gigabyte, I literally had to look that up because I've got so many different VRAM numbers floating around my head for that card at this point. Um... <laughs> 
yeah, apparently the availability is going to get better late this year into early next year. Now, how much of a difference that actually makes, I'm not too certain. I know that NVIDIA are not pushing this card heavily. You know, they've, they haven't released like a Founders Edition model of the GPU. If it was available in large enough quantities, it would actually be a semi-decent card for like the lower end. But obviously, this is a card that's currently quite popular with miners. I honestly have absolutely no idea what the state of things is going to be like when Ethereum switches to, you know, Ethereum 2.0. Um, I keep hearing that that's going to be mid next year, but, you know, people who are kind of like really in the know with mining, they're saying that it's kind of possibly going to be postponed. I honestly don't know on that one. If you know more about mining, feel free to DM me. Let me know your thoughts on the situation. I'm curious, uh, just, you know, for my own information. So feel free to do that. Either way, either way, it's going to be an interesting time because AMD are also releasing a refresh of sorts, and this is going to be for mobile. Now, I have mentioned on the channel a couple of times that I have been hearing of a mobile refresh for RDNA 2, and it does seem to indeed be true. These GPUs are the RX 6000S. There is no real information regarding what the S actually is, um, only that it's possibly going to be using TSMC's N6 process technology. I believe it was Grayman, actually, um, back a while ago, who mentioned that this could possibly be true. Um, but yeah, there's not really any information at the moment regarding the specifications of it. It's possibly still going to be based on Narve 22, so I guess it's going to be 2560 cores, but how this compares to the 6800 that we already have, who the heck knows, we don't have any information regarding clock frequencies or anything like that. Um, I'm hearing it's going to be a modest bump in performance, but honestly, who knows. NVIDIA are also rumored to be uh, releasing a refresh of their RTX 30 series for mobile as well. It's apparently going to be announced at CES. That's what I was told anyway. And I think others have also kind of murmured the same thing. I don't really think it's a surprise that NVIDIA or AMD are doing this. As I've mentioned previously, I'm almost certain that uh, Intel are going to be releasing their Intel Arc series of GPUs first uh, for mobile. And obviously, this is going to put a lot of pressure on NVIDIA, but also AMD as well. I think it's going to be absolutely fascinating to see how the market accommodates a third player. I personally think that even if ARC is not the best in everything, it's going to be nice just for us to have additional competition. And yeah, let me know your thoughts on this, guys. I'm curious. Are you interested in ARC at all? Um... You know, it's going to be it's going to be interesting. I mean, I, th there could be very well be a situation where the best GPU and uh, CPU combination are kind of role reversals to what we've had previously. We can have the best, you know, price performance be like an AMD CPU and an Intel GPU, which could kind of be wild. It will be very interesting, of course, to see also what things like software support is. I'm hearing it's pretty decent, but as always. We can just wait and see. With that said, thank you very much for checking out the video. I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.